Hello everyone, Carlos here. So today in this video, I'm going to be going over a question that we have been getting from multiple customers, which is that actors have been abusing lately in the last couple of months, OneNote files to drop a rat on the system. We'll go over what is the execution of that OneNote file and some guidance in terms of how to monitor for it. So let's get to it. So certain actors out there have been using OneNote files to deliver a rat to which loads WSHOM.OCX, which is a component for execution that we should actually be monitoring for, which then in turn uses WMI. So all of a sudden we have WMI PRVSE executing CMD.exe that then executes PowerShell.exe, which downloads and drops a file and executes it on disk. Um, that's a behavior that we should actually be monitoring already for. And I know that a lot of people out there are going like, hey, why no files? This is new. Actually not. We have been seeing this technique used quite a bit for a very long time. So this is one of the reasons why we're always recommending that you should test all of your security products for gaps. When we look right now at the security products, the most popular ADRs out there and AV products, the very nature of the product is that there are going to be gaps. They're not going to be able to cover every possible scenario. This is why we actually recommend to our customers that instead of buying a red team engagement. Carlos. Okay. So what I meant was that as before they actually buy a red team engagement, that they should always do a purple team before that that they should measure or do attack emulation exercises where they measure the coverage of those products and controls that they have in place, which are the gaps that they currently have and address those gaps. If you have process monitoring enabled in your environment, you should be able to catch this behavior. It is not normal for WMIPRVSE.exe, the WMI process or the SIM database to execute CMD.exe and in turn launch PowerShell.exe and then have a file, an executable be dropped on disk and a bat file drop on disk. So this is stuff that we can actually monitor for. So in the case that we're using Sysmon, we can actually monitor for WSHOM.OCX, which contains the uh, WScript shell object ActiveX component where we can monitor for that being loaded by any office application. If we see that, then we know that certain functionality that is not normally used in macros is actually being leveraged by a office product. That's the first telltale sign. The second one is WMIPRV.exe actually executing another process. That is not common, that's not normal outside of some security products, which is something that you should actually be normalizing. That is another thing that we can monitor with Windows auditing, and we can also use Sysmon. And I know many people out there are going to actually tell me, hey, Carlos, storage is expensive. We cannot pull all of the logs from our clients. And I'm not recommending that. What I'm recommending is that you be targeted in what you're actually pulling. Any product out there that is worth... Hey, Carlos, it's Dave. Just a reminder to uh, watch your tonality and no swear words, hopefully maybe a little bit, but not too many, like last time. And, uh, you know, that we're targeting to a large audience here. Just a reminder, just letting you know. No reason. Okay, I'll be careful with my language. Any product that is out there, which is actually worth anything, is going to allow you to actually filter those locks before you bring them in to save storage. Or you can actually use Sysmon. Sysmon will, actually, will let you create filters and rules where you only generate events and pull those events for what is the outliers of normal behavior in your environment. And you should be able to cache WMIPRV.exe, executing CMD.exe. And also you'll be noticing kind of like, hey, we do use PowerShell, but it's always executed by SVC host for computer logons, or we're using it under this other product. So you already have kind of like a baseline of what execute PowerShell under what user account. And when you see an outlier where you see PowerShell executing in your environment, you go like, this is suspicious. 
which you'll be able to track this. So we can get all of that with process monitoring. In addition to that, we can also look for files being created. So we can look for executables being created with Sysmon. We can look for bat files being created and we can trigger alerts. Now, if you are in a more advanced environment, you can also use Sysmon to block the creation of PE files. That's another thing that you can do, but I do recommend this for an advanced environment where you actually have a testing procedure where you can implement this type of control. Now, I know that I'm talking a lot about Sysmon, but your EDR products also are capable of providing you all of this telemetry and you can write rules in those. This is why it's very important that we are always recommending to our customers, hey, if you buy EDR product X, Y, and C, make sure that you include training for product X, Y, and C. So you're able to address all of that. Now, this is a very short video. I'm going to include a sample Sysmon config file that is going to be linked in the description so you can look at it and test in your environment to help you kind of write your own rules for coverage. And I hope that you found this video informative and useful to you. Thank you.